right, welcome to Talking Shop. Uh, it's good to have you guys back with us. Before we get going, like, subscribe, hit the little bell. You get the notifications when the new ones come out. He thrives on this kind of stuff, really. Yeah, boost his ego. Yeah, a that, that'd be nice. Um, we are looking at uh, a reading from Revelation chapter seven. It's pretty much the whole chapter, um, where the hundred forty-four thousand are sealed. And what that kind of means, uh, this text is traditionally used on All Saints Day, which is uh, why we chose it. Uh, if you're going to be preaching on All Saints Day, which is November 1st, uh, it, it's powerful. It's a text, we use parts of it in funerals a lot, it comes up. Sometimes, yeah. Uh, that are at least some of these images, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, a great um, challenging text in that regard. A little bit challenging because it's a book of Revelation. Uh, and that always poses issues. But yes. we will solve all those. No, maybe we won't. We'll solve some. We'll give our best <laughs> try to solve these issues. Uh, so Revelation 7, 2 through 17. Let's get after it. Beef away, spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome. In the yard. Well, shall we do it? Of the king. We shall. We shall. I mean, after all, it's vision given to us. I have That's right. Uh, so, Revelation 7, 4, uh, God 2, God the end of the chapter. Seven, I took his cry. And um, Yet I'm still it begins with John in the his yard. vision seeing another of angel. Uh, now, if you include verse 1, it's, it means but not one of the angels. The four angels holding back the uh, um, the four winds of the earth. These are these uh, judgment images. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having a seal. And I, I the image here is almost like a like a branding iron of some sort, maybe. Yeah, to or, some extent, because uh, it's the same word then that's used for sealing these one hundred forty four thousand. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's to mark them. Somehow. It, somehow a mark. Now, the, the word is signet, which usually goes, I don't remember. I didn't do the work on it to find out if it's the same word used as the ring on the uh, prodigal's, prodigal's uh, the, finger, the signet ring. Yeah, I don't know yeah, if the two are related know, yeah. or not. Yeah. Again, we don't do all your work for you. <laughs> That's right. So, But he's got the seal. Uh, it's the seal of the living God. Um, and uh, he, he calls out. So he's got the seal in his hand. He calls to those four other angels mm -hmm. um, uh, who have been given power to harm the earth and the sea. And he says, hold on. Yeah. Right. So the image or the context is definitely that of uh, impending judgment upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And so before that judgment comes... Um, this angel is going to seal uh, with with this uh, the church, we, we would say. Yeah. Uh, and it, the church is how many people? 144,000. Yes. And if you don't believe us, ask your Jehovah's Witness friends. It's a, it, you know. Don't ask them. It's right here in the text. <laughs> That's right. Verse 4, I saw 144,000 sealed. Yeah. Actually... Interesting point of contention. He does not see that. He hears it. I heard the number. Oh, you're yes. right. Ooh. One of the great things I think about this text Interesting. In, in preaching it is the play, which often happens in Revelation, between what is seen and what is heard. Mm -hmm. And and the, um, you know, obviously it's written by uh, St. John, the evangelist, who deals with the same sort of thing in uh, his gospel, uh, the relationship between what is seen and heard. But anyway, he hears the number that are sealed. He hears that it's 144,000 that are sealed uh, from every tribe of the sons of Israel. So that's the context. So 144,000 um, numbers mean things, especially in the book of Revelation. Um, I would say if I was preaching this text, which I probably will be, um, I wouldn't get bogged down in the numbers game. Well, and by that I mean 
I don't think that's the thrust of it. You can kind of just get to it. Right. right? Well, and and we're gonna. Well, I mean, we've 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 held it off, and you can hold it off for your people too. But, but, you were talking about what he's heard and what he's seen, seen yeah. and what he sees it's very is very different. Is very interesting. So. One of the things that you learn really quick, and, and maybe this is just a hermeneutic if you haven't heard it for Revelation. Revelation is a revelation. It's a dream. It's a vision. And so nothing in Revelation is taken literally. Everything in Revelation points to something else. Okay. And so the number 144 isn't a literal number. It points to something else. The 12,000 from each tribe are not literal. They're pointing to something okay. else. Um, and I think then what he sees later on kind of fulfills right. or, or so, fleshes that out. So you have this out. number, and I guess that's all I'm saying is, is like the, like we were talking about, you could have a discussion about why uh, the Dan isn't listed in the yep. list and all this kind Even of stuff. Even though there's 12? But, but you get you get the list, 144,000, 12,000 from each uh, list. I would just throw this out there. I had a, um, uh, an old professor of mine, Dr. Norman Nagel, would say, when God, when the Lord does a church, He does a twelve, hmm. and uh, and you know it's, He kind of uses it, this is the image of the church, yeah. and so you have twelve tribes. Twelve. I mean, this number comes up over in Revelation. You got, you know, the new the the vision of the the new heavens, new earth, mm -hmm. and the twelve foundations and. 12, 12 gates, gates and, and, yep. yeah, and all that kind of stuff. And what's interesting, if you go there, and that's one of the places where, again, don't don't like preach on this, <laughs> but but it's information you need to connect yeah, with yeah. and you need to help your people connect with it. Um, the foundations are the tribes of Israel. The, the gates, gates are the apostles. Are the apostles. Yeah, that's right. So And, and so 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes gives you 144,000. Yeah. And so it's the so this is what he hears. So when you move through it real quick, you move to verse 9, mm -hmm. he then looks. So he, he hears this, 144,000. If you were like acting it out, he's kind of like maybe looking over this way and he hears this. He turns around to look at it. And what does he see? A multitude no one can count. Yeah. So what, what, he, what he's actually looking at of those sealed are beyond number. Yes. Right? And... Um, they are not just from the 12 tribes of Israel. They are from every tribe yes. and tongue and nation and peoples right. and language. And, it, and it's, you know, man, this anchors you back into the promise given to Abraham, right? Your mm -hmm. offspring will be more numerous than the stars of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Way more numerous. Yeah, 144,000. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and so, and they're standing before the throne, uh, before the Lamb, they got white robes on. They have palm branches in their hands. Um, you could probably say a little bit of that. This is sort of the the victory image. These are people in a in a state of uh, completion of, of mm -hmm. their of their mm -hmm. struggles. They're 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 victorious. All that kind of comes yeah. through. Well, and it takes you back to Palm Sunday, right? And the crowds uh, waving their palm branches yeah, and declaring, yeah. you know. Here's the here's the son of David, Hosanna yep. to the son of David. So, yep. Yeah, and if even that, like they, they cry out Hosanna there, which mm -hmm. is the cry for salvation, and then the proclamation here is salvation, salvation belongs, belongs to God to God who sits on the throne of the Lamb. Like salvation, here it is. Now they're gathered around the throne. Yep. Um, and uh, I, and you get some more of the imagery. The angels are there. The the, the elders, that's how they're described, those who dress in white robes, um, the four living creatures, they all, everyone falls on their face. They, they prostrate themselves before the throne and they say um, this great benediction. This great yeah, blessing. or doxology yeah. is another way. Yeah. Uh, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Uh, again, highlighting all of creation, all mm -hmm. in eternity, everything is bowing before this God and the Lamb who sits upon the throne. Yeah, and this is the culmination of, of in Revelation, of multiple doxologies, if uh -huh. you will. You have the, the seraphim flying over saying their doxology. You have the elders throwing down their crown, crowns Crown. and saying yeah, their yeah. doxology. Yeah. And now you have the, the 144,000, the, the saints yeah. gathered into this. And now comes, 
kind of, and I think if I'm right, this is the last doxology. Okay. Um, so again, you can it's comment on that and tell me I'm wrong, yeah, but yeah, yeah. this is the, yeah. this is the last one we'll get. And then, and so then, uh, one of the elders, um, comes up to, to John and says, who are these guys? Those dressed with the white robes and, and where did they come from? Yeah. Right. Um, and this is, we always joke about this every time we do this text. Uh, and it's, John has the biggest, lamest response you could possibly give. The best line in all of scripture, <laughs> in my opinion. The, if any question is asked ever of you in the scriptures, yeah. by this is your answer yeah. that you should know. He says, you know. You know. <laughs> Sir, you sir. know, yeah, he dresses him as Lord, so, but it's yeah, the it's the yeah. master, or sir. It's the yeah. it's the uh, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, who are these? You know, dressed in my robes. He's like, well, you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you got it right. I love it. Uh, it's good, yeah. And he does know, uh, yeah. and so he he talks through it. Uh, they're the ones coming out of the the big, the mega tribulation, the great tribulation of the earth. Um, which has been the theme up till now. Uh, Revelation, you know, goes through these movements of kind of what's going on in eternity and the, the tribulation on earth. Mm -hmm. and, and so here's one of these things. You're caught up in this moment where you're seeing something beyond the, the tribulation on the earth. And you see they've come out. They've come out and they washed their robes. And the robes have been made white in the blood of the Lamb. So again, the, the play between... What is seen and what is real still continues to play yeah. out. You know, it doesn't make sense that you would wash something in blood and make it white, mm -hmm. right? But obviously, I mean, that's a rich image for for preaching. Yeah. Um, uh, when the, when you wash it in the blood of the lamb, this is purity itself, right? Yeah. Um, Even though it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It is. It is the. Yeah. It is the reality for those who know that reality. Um, yeah, and then he uh, he ends with uh, with kind of not only promises uh, promises prophecies realities um, quotations from the Old Testament, yeah. both from Isaiah and from He's Psalm, builds it up um, about what eternity looks like for for those uh, for those saints uh, for those who have come out of that great tribulation. Yeah, and what it looks like is perfection and and safety and comfort no harm done to them um, no no trouble is going to uh, to enter into them they will want for nothing um, and all of that because this lamb going back to chapter four who's in the midst of the throne is the one who who guides them and it it, it almost pulls back into psalm 23 language then absolutely by springs yeah. of living water yeah. and yeah. uh and uh, all of this. So, yeah. And what's great about this text, uh, and this is the way I'm going to be preaching it using a different text, but um, so two things. One, that all the way back in verse two, the angels who had been given the power to harm the earth, uh, if you look up that word in the Greek, that word is used in Luke chapter 10, where, where uh, Jesus sends out the 72. And says, "I give you power to uh, uh, over over demons and scorpions, and and uh, he says, and nothing will harm yeah, you. Yeah, that's the same yeah, word there, yeah. and that's definitely the picture you get here. What's also interesting is if you go to the last verse of uh, uh, last two verses, really, of chapter six in Revelation, it's the people on earth when this tribulation is happening, and they say um, they're calling out to the rocks, fall down upon us." Um, from, and, and hide us from him who is seated on the throne, from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come. And who can stand? Yeah, who's going to stand? And chapter 7 is all about those who are left standing. Yeah, yeah those who are And seated. they are the saints who follow yeah. the Lamb, who, interestingly enough, right. the world looks at in wrath, and yet it's the one who is going to bring them to living water, right. who yeah, comforts the, them. The, the Lamb, he's their shepherd. Mm -hmm. He will lead, lead them to that. Uh, they are sealed with his seal. Mm -hmm. um, I, so there's baptismal imagery, obviously easy connection you can make there for your hearers. Uh, another thing um, that is a worthwhile connection 
is this will also be the Sunday right before our election in this country. And so uh, where people, uh, you know, are generally concerned. Yeah, yeah. And they're concerned about, I mean, not, we don't have kings, obviously, in, in our country, but who's kind of sitting on the mm-hmm. throne of power? Mm-hmm. Where's that authority coming? And you get this moment here, which is the same way this text, I, we use it a lot in a funeral where with all the chaos and, and, and what's next and I just lost my father or whatever and they're, and they're grasping and you give this this picture of this assurance yeah. where there's no harm. There, and like this is the promise you have in Christ. But that's for you going through this election yes, too. It like is. in the midst of all this, there's still worship going on. Yeah. There's still the gathering around the throne. And yep. this is still this is still who you are. Yep. You are still sealed. This you are st- sealed, and yeah. and nothing can harm you. Even e- again, this is the language. Even th- this is where we kind of have to take our reality seriously. Even uh, for for Job in chapter nineteen, mm-hmm. even if I die, yet in you my flesh yes, I will good. see yeah. God. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. This world is is going from all sides. Right. If so and so gets elected, who can stand? Kind of thing, yeah, that's right. right? And yet here we stand yeah. uh, in uh, Christ. Good. Uh, another good thing I remember um, having Revelation presented to me as as a conversation about what is what is sort of fading, passing shadow, and what is eternal and real. Mm-hmm. And the and the image moves back and forth between the turmoil and tribulation of this world and the eternal thing is the thing you've you've already hammered on is is this where there's no harm there's this peace uh this assurance around the, the throne of the lamb and and that that reminder that this all could fall apart yeah, yeah it can in fact it will according <laughs> to the uh, rest of revelation and, and yet for for those who are sealed yeah they'll be fine yeah right the lamb is their shepherd yep. so uh, lots there. Uh, good timing. I mean, All Saints Day, election coming up, all yeah. that stuff. Uh, great opportunity. Easy text if we stay with, and this is uh, always, it, it reminds me of the preface from Dr. Brighton in his Revelation commentary, where he learned from a little old lady in his first congregation that Revelation was actually about comfort yeah. for the saints. Yeah. It's not terrifying to those who are in Christ. Absolutely. It's actually comfort. Yeah. So, so Absolutely. preach it that way to yeah, people. Yeah, preach it. Uh, yeah, uh, let us know any other thoughts on this text, things we might have missed. Uh, continue the conversation there as well. Uh, we will catch you next week. Hopefully Ernie will be back. They're always trying to keep Ernie here, but he keeps slipping away. Yeah. God bless your preaching.